guy they want you to guess. I'm going to tell you about a guy named Richard. Richard was a successful entrepreneur in the upper Midwest of the United States. He broke away from a family business, started his own business, smart guy. He had a chain of, started off as music stores and kind of expanded into electronics, TV, stereo, stuff like that. He built his chain into, he had eight or ten stores. The guy's doing really good. Took him a while to figure out how to be profitable, but over time he had it. The model was working. He's making money. Life is cool. Change came along and turned this guy's world upside down, not unlike what you guys are experiencing now. But this was a literal change that literally turned his world upside down because a tornado came through this guy's town, came through Richard's town, damaged his largest, most profitable store, damaged a lot of his inventory. This dude is in trouble. His business could be going out of business if he doesn't manage this thing correctly. How he responded summarizes everything I want to share with you guys this morning. Because here's what Richard did. Richard pulled his people around a table and he said, folks, we've got a tremendous opportunity here. Now stop and think about that. There's your largest store. It's a pile of rubble. And, and, and you know, a bunch of your inventory is damaged. And this guy is saying they have a tremendous opportunity. So the people must have said, Richard, what are you talking about? Where's our opportunity? He goes, well, this tornado is allowing us to do something that we could never do before. And they're like, Richard, what are you talking about, man? Richard says, hey, we can have a tornado sale. We couldn't do that before because there was no tornado. But, but now we've had a tornado. We can have a tornado sale. And I bet people said, Richard, what's a tornado sale? And I bet Richard said, I don't know. <laughs> we've never had one before. But together, we're going to figure it out. So here's what they figured out. They said, we're going to take all of our damage inventory. We're going to fix it up as best we can. We're going to have to discount it because it's been in a tornado. Somebody must have said, but Richard, we can't let people in the store. It's too dangerous. It's too, it's too messed up. Somebody else must have said, well, the warehouse is still standing. Just let people in the warehouse. Pick the stuff off the shelves. Why not? And then they took a risk. You cannot get through the kind of change you're facing without taking some level of risk. In your case, capital commitment. A risk, right? Where I got all, that's adding a whole lot of cost. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to recoup that cost. It's a risk. You've got to take risk to get through change. Well, their risk was they took their advertising bu budget for the rest of the year, the entire budget for the rest of the year, and they plowed it into one sale. And they just plastered their town with signs and billboards and placards, tornado sale, high-end electronics at a discount. Now, the day of the sale comes, Richard looks out in his parking lot, and what do you suppose he sees? This is my question I use to sort of gauge the mindset of my audience. Because <laughs> I usually get one of two responses. Either a long line of cars, which I go, good. Or then my cynics, I get another tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Happily, it was a long line of cars. Turned out to be the most successful sale in the history of the company. Matter of fact, the sale was so successful, they said, you know what, hey, why are we doing this every year? Even if we don't have a tornado, we'll have a tornado sale every year. So they repeated it a couple of years. Every year is the best, most successful sale of the company. Richard's not a dummy. He said, you know what, just because the way we've been doing business up till now has worked doesn't mean there's not a better way. And so they permanently changed their business model for a couple of years from selling, you know, traditional store, high-end, you know, products, you know, margins, to a discounted, a permanently discounted warehouse model. Time of the tornado, back in, uh, I think it was in the early 80s or so, so excuse me, they had uh, eight or 10 stores. The chain is still around today. The chain today has well over 1,300 stores, eight to 10 to 1,300, not bad growth, all over the globe. And the name of the chain is Best Buy. It's a good thing for me it wasn't Circuit City. Because <laughs> then I need a whole new opening to my talk, and I really like this opening. You could say that Best Buy got its start because of this tornado. But more importantly, how Richard Schultz and his team chose to respond to the tornado. Well, guess what? You guys got your own virtual tornado right now, don't you? The Obama administration is coming in, and they're going to regulate out the wazoo on you guys. 
and oh my gosh, and we're going to try this Kaplan commitment, and the press is kind of all over us. And I mean, this is a tough time. We got our virtual tornado. We got the recession. We've all been sharing that, haven't we? I mean, we have collectively shared in that recession. I was in this very same hotel. You guys want to talk about virtual tornadoes? I was in this very same hotel last month. Ironically, here I am again. Totally different group, but you know what their change was? Their change was I was speaking to the, t the corporate teams, to the CEO and all the corporate folks and their operations people. Their change was they had gotten bought out. This particular company they had gotten bought out by a French firm. And one half to three quarters of the people that I was speaking to knew they had no job, probably around the turn the first of the year. But, 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 but we need you to lead the organization through the transition before you leave. Tough times, tough times. But my message to them was the same as to you. There is always what I call a ring in the rubble. All right, Gary, what's that? What's the ring in the rubble? Well, the ring. The ring is a metaphor. It's a symbol, the golden ring of opportunity that I believe to the bottom of my soul, my heart, my gut, my brain, every change creates opportunity. Yeah? Even the most difficult, painful change you can imagine in your life creates golden rings of opportunity. But here's the scoop. Change also stirs up rubble. <laughs> you can all lose your job in a couple of months. Yeah, that's, that's what we call rubble. Rubble is fear. It's uncertainty. It's disruption to our routine. It's changing the way we did things. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's sadness. So change creates rings, golden opportunity. Change stirs up rubble. My message to you today, there is always, always a ring in the rubble. Your job is to go find it. My job is to give you the tools and show you how. So, I mean, we go through, again, the rubble that you guys, the virtual tornado and the rubble we've all been dealing with, the recession. You guys got, you know, last year you changed admission standards. We're not going to take, you know, folks that don't have a high school diploma. So that begins to cut down some of the folks that we can bring in. We got the Kaplan commitment coming up, which I imagine, like, how in the world do I manage my budget with that? We got these government regulations, which I've been doing a lot of speaking in healthcare. I got to speak at Aetna the day after healthcare reform passed. That was kind of fun. And, and, I mean, and it's like, <laughs> you know, and, and with government regulations, it's always like, uh, what was it? I think, what, 1,400 pages worth or something? And nobody really knows what's in there, so we got to figure all that stuff. And have you noticed, have you noticed that when you go home from work, change, change doesn't stop? Some of you are saying, hey, Gary, all that stuff you just rattled off, on the professional side, that's nothing compared to what I got going on at home. What do I do about my teenager? Anybody know what the divorce rate is in our country? It's, it's around, you guys have had a rough life. You guys are like 55, 60, 65, do I hear 70? <laughs> <laughs> I think last I checked it was around 50, but you know where the second, second marriages, you know what the divorce rate is in second marriages? That's where it's higher. We're not figuring it out the first time around. We're gonna, we come back in there. So some of us, probably 50% of us, are dealing with stuff like that. Some of you are dealing with stuff like what my wife Peggy and I went through over the last several years, where we live in North Carolina, although I grew up in Fairfax, Virginia, Washington Post boy growing up. And, and, now, and my now 83-year-old mother is very online Washington Post person in Iowa. It's really cool how technology brings you together. But for the last several years, we live in, I now live in North Carolina, my wife Peggy, she's my life partner, she's my business partner. We got own a business together, we got two kids, we're running all that, and she had an elderly father living down in Alabama with her stepmother. A lot of you guys have this stuff too. You're trying to run your business, you're trying to manage your family, you live in one state, you got elderly parents in another. And we went through a period of about two years where we would get the same call over and over. Hello, Peggy, your father's in the hospital, it really doesn't look good this time, you better get down here as soon as you can. So Peggy would literally pack the black dress, drop everything, make, you know, drop business appointments, try to take care of the kids, do, do, hop on a plane, go down to Alabama. She go walking into the hospital, and there's her dad. Honey, they got good coffee in this hospital. And she's like, okay. All right, this time isn't the one, but it would happen over and over and over again. Some of you got stuff like that. Some of you got stuff that's, you know, I would put in the even tougher situation. You know, you've... You've been to the doctor recently, or a loved one has, and the, the diagnosis is not good. Or maybe you've just lost somebody. We all got rubble. 
I'm telling you, though, no matter what you're going through, there's always a ring in the rubble. So here's what I want you guys, guys to do. Because my job is going to get, your job is to find the ring. Your job here at Kaplan is to find all those golden rings. It's to lead other people to those rings, to lead your teams to those rings. My job today, I'm going to give you the tools. Now, if we had an actual pile of rubble over here, and there was an actual ring being buried in it, and I say, hey, go find a ring, you'd say, well, Gary, give me some gloves, give me picks, give me shovels, I need some tools. So I'm going to give you tools to dig through the rubble. But I want my time for you to be very, very practical. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about a change you've got going on in your life right now where all you can see is the rubble. You know how we all have that little voice in the back of our head? It's a little color commentator. It's been going the whole time I'm talking. You're going, I wonder how long this guy's going to talk. My butt's kind of sore. Well, i got to remember to call so-and-so afterwards. Ooh, she's pretty. All that kind of stuff. You get that little, <laughs> you get that little, that little voice in the back of your head. I want you to pick a change in your life right now. This will be a private process, okay? I'm not going to come up and say, hey, how's your marriage going, sir? Tell us. No, I'm not going to do that. But I want you, I want my time with you practical. I want you not focused on me so much. I want you focused on your life and the change you've got going on it right now where that little voice, when I gave the ring and the rubble concept to you, I want you to pick a change in your life where that little voice said, hey, Gary, you don't know my situation. And if you did, you'd know there's no rings there. That's the, ch the change I want you focused on. Whether it's within Kaplan or in your personal life, I really, really don't care because the tools I'm going to give you are going to be able to apply in both places. And if I can lighten your load at home, it's going to help you when you come into work. So that's your job. It's, it's a private process, but be thinking right now about, hmm, what's the change I got going on in my life right now? 